So now I'm going to talk about the DDAA model in international macroeconomics and international finance. This is taken from the popular Krugman, Obsfeld, Mellitz textbook, International Economics Theory and Policy. This model gives us equilibrium output and exchange rates in an open economy with perfect capital mobility. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show what the model is for. So the main goal is to determine a country's equilibrium output, or GDP, and exchange rate simultaneously. So it's going to have two axes. One is going to, the uh, vertical axis is going to be the exchange rate, one country, the home country, in terms of a foreign currency. And then the horizontal axis is going to be the output, or GDP. And so shifts in the model will show how changes, how these variables can change due to different policy and other, other outcomes. So the main thing is for fiscal and monetary policy, but we can also look at um, other you know, expectations and other impacts, maybe consumer spending. But the end result is that we can see what happens to the currency and output. Um, you, the, in 2017 in the U.S. there was a big tax cut. You could predict that the dollar would rise and GDP would, would also increase uh, you know, with the appreciation based on this model. And so it's pretty useful for sort of a baseline you know, economic policy analysis, even though there's a lot more you could do with it to, to mimic you know, the real world in some other areas. And so we're going to set it up here. We're going to talk about two markets. One is the goods market, and the other is the asset market. And both models have to be in equilibrium. Um, each curve represents an equilibrium in these markets, and then simultaneous equilibrium will be uh, the crossing point of both curves. So in the goods market, the one rule is that income must equal expenditure. So when a country earns money, produces, um, the spending should be equal. Um, in disequilibrium, if spending is too high, you will draw down inventories. But if spending is too low, you're producing more than you're spending or consuming um, as a country, so you would actually build up inventories. And so equilibrium is when there's no building up or drawing down of inventories, and so income must equal expenditures. This is going to be shown in the Keynesian cross. It's used in a number of economic models, and we're going to see where the crossing point comes from. The DD curve has uh, equilibrium combinations of the exchange rate and output that maintain equilibrium for all income levels and all exchange rates. Um, one thing to note is the letters DD come from the D in goods, I think. Back in the day, they would have the line with a D on one end and a D on the other, um, kind of like supply and demand, but there would be actually letters on both sides, and so DD is connecting both letters, I think. Um, asset market, obviously A stands for asset. It's expected rate of return at home is equal to expected rate of return in the foreign country. I show this in a different slides, a different video, um, deriving the IRP interest rate parity exchange rate model. But the idea is that the expected rate of returns must be equal, otherwise capital will flow into the country with a higher rate of return, out of the one with the lower rate of return, and then the curves have to align to restore equilibrium. Equilibrium is restored a lot quicker in the asset market. You can have shortages of goods, you can have overproduction, you can have time lags where there's a shortage of goods, uh, but there's no overproduction of assets, no shortage of assets. The interest rates and the exchange rates simply adjust immediately. So this one reaches equilibrium much quicker. All right. This this is going to give us the AA curve, which is also equilibrium combinations of E and Y that have equilibrium in this other market. So uh, how is equilibrium restored? One way to look at it is thinking of balancing, right? One side goes up, the other has to go up as well. You know, if left goes up, right has to go up, or if left goes up, it has to go back down. So getting out of equilibrium in one side has to mean restoring it in another. Um, holding a couple things equal, um, if exchange rate goes up, remember that's a depreciation of the currency. Exports will go up, and so spending will be greater than output. And I'm kind of ignoring imports, right? Uh, Spending goes up, and then one way to get it back to equilibrium is for income to go up. And so income can drive imports. And so if E goes up, Y goes up to restore equilibrium. You can go the other direction as well. If income goes up, imports go up, and then the exchange rate will, can depreciate and to bring exports up. So then X and M are back in balance, so then Y doesn't change. So uh, you can look at it either way. If one variable changes, you're out of balance. You have to change the other variable to bring it back into balance. Same thing with expected rate of return. If Y goes up, I'll show you the money market, but in, in macroeconomics, if income rises, the interest rate goes up because money demand goes up. And so then that will cause ERR to go up 
and so the way to bring it back down is to appreciate the currency if, if it goes up. So uh, this is basically shown as shifting in the curve as opposed to like a balancing act. But the currency will appreciate, and so now you'll have a combination with a strong Y and a strong dollar. So notice that uh, these can go in other um, in a different direction as well. So here we have the Keynesian cross, this aggregate expenditure. Right. Notice the exchange rate is not drawn here. We're going to have to introduce E on a different graph. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to change the exchange rate. And it's going to change aggregate expenditure for a country's goods. Remember, this is total spending for a country's products. Domestic consumption, business investment, government spending, and net exports, which is exports to other countries as well as imports by the country itself. This is simply equilibrium where aggregate expenditure total spending is equal to income so this is the all possible equilibrium this is the one point where actual spending cross is equal to theoretical equality right so this is where spending and income are the same this is the one point where the actual spending function equals that and so that is equilibrium gdp I also want to note, you can use this as the base point for the AD, AD curve and the ASAD model. If you simply change the price level, raising prices will, will give you less real spending, and that will give you a, a different point on the AD curve. And you can also change R, which works through investment. And so raising R will lower spending, and that will give you different points on the, on the IS curve. So this is used for three different models. Here we're going to do DDAA. Here we're going to change the exchange rate. We're going to weaken it and strengthen it, and watch what happens to total spending, primarily through exports. All right. And so what can happen is that if you appreciate the currency, exports will drop, and equilibrium GDP will drop. If you depreciate the currency, you're going to see that exports rise and equilibrium rises. So we're going to have... Uh, these different combinations, you can see they're both in the same direction. This will be an upward sloping curve. So we're going to start with E0, which is our baseline. There's this Y0, which is the first GDP. We're going to have a weaker currency in green, then we're going to strengthen it further in, in red. And we're going to see that we're going to get three points on the DD curve. So weakening the currency means more spending by foreigners, which leads to higher aggregate expenditure and higher equilibrium GDP. And then you can look at the higher GDP over here and the weaker currency here. Now, if we strengthen it, again, a stronger currency and the low GDP, this is a third equilibrium point, which we, now we have three. We can do it for everything in between, slide it around, get every point, and we get an upward sloping DD curve. These are all potential equilibrium points where income equals spending. All of them work. All of them meet that rule. All right. Now, if you want to shift the curve, one we're going to talk about here is an increase in government spending. Now, one way to look at it is what would happen if you increase aggregate expenditure for this point here? You'd be all the way up here, right? And then you can redraw a higher line and a lower line, but they all take place way up here, which means a way higher GDP. So you could redo the points further out. And so an increase in G simply redraws the line with more GDP, all else equal. So it's a rightward or downward shift. Usually I would say rightward because it's more. But redrawing the line would give us a rightward shift to the DD curve. Other things you could do is a tax cut, uh, in, an investment increase, an autonomous investment, or autonomous consumption. All of those would lead to a higher or rightward shift in DD. Now, to get the AA curve, let's talk about the money market. Now, this is where income comes in. If you increase income, you're going to wind up with higher interest rates. And notice the interest rates here are over here. We're going to rotate this and combine them, but this is a shared axis. If I change the interest rate in the money market, I'm going to change ERR at home. Right? And so increase in GDP is to a higher equilibrium interest rate. This would help us get the LM curve in the ISLM model. And then this higher interest rate is a higher ERR. And notice higher income and a stronger currency go together. All right? And so we can draw here. Higher income, higher expected rate of return, stronger currency. And so equilibrium is automatically restored. So both of these points are in equilibrium. All right. So here's the asset market. We're going to maintain equilibrium by making sure we're at the crossing point. We're going to start at E0, and Y0 is assumed here. Now we're going to raise the income to Y1, a larger GDP, and we wind up with a stronger currency. So larger GDP and a stronger currency go at this green point, and then we're going to say the smaller GDP, which will lower the rate of return at home, 
and will give us a weaker currency. So these three points are also equilibrium and we can fill in the gaps, we can get a line which is the AA curve. Now again, if we were to change the MS, right, increase money supply, it's going to make income larger, all else equal. All right, or you could say it's a weaker currency, all else equal, because there's a lower interest rate. But either way, we could redraw all of this simply starting with a higher or lower GDP. Right? Or you could look at it through the interest rate as well. But long, either way, long story short, if you, if you have more money, GDP will be higher, all else equal. Exchange rates will be weaker, all else equal. So you'll have this upward to the right shift for an increase in money supply. Another thing that could shift it is the price level in the long run. All right, so now we're going to do these both together. It's important to note you can look at the movement along the curve as well as a shift in the curve. We're going to do two separate shifts and look at them together. But if you shift one curve, the other will move as well. All right, so if I shift AA, it's going to change the currency. Then you can think back to the what happens on the DD curve. Right? If printing money shifts AA, weakens the currency, then we're going to basically talk about how the weaker currency increases exports. And if we drew three points and connected them, we're, if you shift AA, you have two points that, we, that you link through the weaker currency. So you move along the DD curve because the weaker currency shifts the, the aggregate expenditure curve. So what this means is that if you shift AA, it's simply going to move along DD to get two of the points that make up the curve rather than shifting the whole DD curve itself. All right, so I'll come back to that in a minute. All right, so first we're going to shift uh, DD through a fiscal expansion. Remember, more government spending all else equal leads to higher GDP, but we also see that it leads to a stronger currency, right? Government uh, spending raises rates, so it raises the rate of return and strengthens the currency, increases demand for assets the government might be borrowing, but the, the, what this model shows us is that this will strengthen the currency as it raises GDP. And so that's what you take from the model, right? What are the effects of a fiscal expansion? Both the increase in GDP that other models will show, but also a, an appreciation of the currency. Now, a Fed expansion, now starting with keeping the original AA line and keeping the original DD line and going right to here, you see that. Monetary expansions also increase GDP, but they weaken the currency because, remember, printing more dollars leads to a depreciation of the currency. Lowering rates through the interest rate parity condition weakens the currency. All these things point to a weaker currency. So they have the same result for GDP. It increases, but opposite effects for the, the value of the currency. Fiscal expansion strengthens. Monetary expansion weakens the currency. Now, if you look at them both together, you will see that this effect on E is ambiguous, right? They could equally cancel themselves up, but they don't have to. One could be bigger, one could be smaller. It could be a net effect of both appreciation or depreciation. You really can't tell unless you know more. But the increase in output is unambiguous, right? Both together, it's two expansions. It's going to be a much larger expansion in the economy, OK? So that's both of them together. But if you just do one at a time, just remember this. If if you, if you shift one, that's because of something that is not the exchange rate, right? Government spending, or, a t or in this example, a tax cut. So government expansion or a tax cut or increased consumer confidence or something like that. That is not the exchange rate. But what happens next is that you move from two points because something that is the exchange rate, right? So government spending pushes up the dollar, right? And so then that will lead to an increase over here, right? So, so you're going to move up uh, at the way to restore equilibrium along this curve. So it's, this is basically two points that were originally drawn in, in the money market, or in the, in the asset market, right? And as I said before, if the Fed expands, then it's going to weaken the dollar. That's going to be an increase in aggregate expenditure in the goods market, right? So you can visualize that as a sh shift upward in the aggregate expenditure curve. The weaker dollar pushes exports along, right? So this, remember, the curve that shifts is because of something that's not the exchange rate, but that induces a movement along the curve because of the exchange rate, because the shift caused a change in that exchange rate, OK? But I usually look at these one at a time, and these give us clear results, the effect of fiscal policy and monetary policy on the dollar, as well as on output. Now, this assumes a couple things. First of all, it's short run. I do, do not have price adjustment. This has sticky prices. In the long run, you could have prices adjust, which actually could move the EE, excuse me, move the AA curve. And sometimes, uh, for example, uh, shifting DD here will, will cause 
AA to shift in such a way you wind up with a vertical line. But right now, this is short run. Another thing I don't look at um, is fixed exchange rates. Okay, so a central bank could, could use monetary policy to maintain a set exchange rate. And in this case, this fiscal policy would be unsustainable because this currency appreciation isn't allowed, and you could actually see the, a fixed exchange rate uh, use money to bring it to here. Okay, uh, but but that that is sort of outside of what I'm doing right now. All right, so you could talk about the long run. You could talk about fixed exchange rates, but here's sort of the simple model that gives us the effects of single policy changes. So we've set up the model. We've derived these curves by showing three different points on each curve, and three different points on these curves show where the curve comes from, and then shown that one point is common to both. That's the equilibrium point. And then by different changes in fiscal and monetary policy, you shift one curve, and that changes the equilibrium point from being uh, of all the options on this curve, we simply choose a different one, right? But then the entire curve moves for the one that, that we shift, right? And so as a result of the shift in the curve, we wind up with a new point that is also common to both, and then that tells us the equilibrium exchange rate and the equilibrium output, and then it tells us what the, what effects these policies have on these two variables of interest.